San Francisco, one of the richest cities in the nation, known globally for its tech innovations, high rent prices, and visually stunning tourist landmarks. But striving in the shadows of the fortune, in the outskirts of the city known as Frisco, two San Francisco natives co-founded Urban Student Athlete Development Academy, and their number one goal is to see the youth of this city succeed academically and athletically, all while providing the structure and discipline to help them see it through. This is the Happy Hour Show Bay Area. I am Mikey Slacks, and along with me, Trotty. Today we have with us the co-founders of San Francisco's Urban Student Athlete Development Academy. Guys, welcome to the studio. Thanks welcome to the show. Us. Thanks for having, having us. Right on. Yeah. Um, so just starting off, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people? All right, I'm Celestino Ellington, Coach Tino, uh, co-founder of Urban Student Athlete Development Academy. And I'm uh, Coach Bill co-founder of Urban Student Athlete Development Academy. So you guys are both San Francisco natives. Uh, why don't we just take it back uh, for the people one time and just give a little bit of backstory about your guys uh, growing up here in the city. Uh, well, um, I'm first generation American. Uh, my dad is from Panama. Uh, my mom is from the Philippines and uh, met in the mission and this is what you get. And uh, growing up in a new country, new culture, uh, it, it was hard for us. and. Uh, you know, stable housing was was an issue for us, but my parents were big on education. And uh, you know, I went to a really good K through eight school uh, because, and then I fell in love with sports, maybe like fourth and fifth grade. And that was my ticket out of my situation. Nice. And I ended up going to Archbishop Reardon High School, played football and baseball, went to Car Whittier College, played football and baseball, was the first in my family to graduate from college. And I realized then it was, it wasn't about talent, it wasn't about smarts. It was about access, access mm -hmm. to information and, um, you know, good people taking you along. And right. I had that going yeah, putting up. Putting that work you know, in. I had, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, <laughs> sports was my vehicle into education. And, uh, you know, since the college days, I knew I wanted to do something like mm -hmm. this. I didn't know that, you know, uh, 19 years later, it would really come would into this. Mm -hmm. It would really happen. So, um, you know, so nah, it's been the uh, best thing I've ever done outside of parenting and, uh, you know, for years, me and Coach Bill has been trying to figure out what over 15 years because we work well together. Right. And we just didn't know what lane, what lane to take with each other. And, uh, you know, when we started this, we both knew this was it. And uh, it's been nothing but impactful this ever since. The calling. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm uh, born and raised in San Francisco, uh, Sunnydale Housing Projects. Uh, my path is the total opposite of his. <laughs> and I think that's what makes us work so good together. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly because absolutely. growing up, you know, we played a lot of sports uh, in, in the projects, in the parking lot, mm -hmm. man. Uh, football, dodgeball, uh, uh, softball, in the little parking lot that yeah. we thought was really <laughs> humongous at yeah, the time. Right, you know right, what yeah. I mean? Like, but, uh, so, you know, I was really athletic. Um, Went to all public schools, man, but I, I got in a little trouble along the way. You know what I mean? Like, and then it carried over. I graduated from high school because my mom always says, you know, growing up in the project, you see every all the shootings, the stabbing. Back then it was the needles in the in the vacant houses right. and everything. She said, All I want you to do is just graduate high school. Get that degree. So man. I respected my mom so much, no matter what sure. I was into. Right. And I was into a lot of things, man. <laughs> like, you know, and I, I, I graduated from high school, but look, about a mom. month later, I was in juvenile hall. I was, I was 17 when I graduated. And mm -hmm. then went to juvenile, stayed there for like six weeks. And, uh, she was like, we got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. But she didn't move far enough. We, we moved uh, <laughs> maybe like about six blocks down. And down you know what I mean? So I, I always stayed, you know, stayed in Sunnydale. But I ended up uh, working for uh, Wreck and Park. Okay. Well, first, let me go back. Mm -hmm. I started working for gang prevention mm -hmm. in 1990. And I uh, started seeing a little difference 
Uh, and I did a little college. I did a little mm-hmm. city college. I'm a city college guy, but I uh, started seeing a little different uh, avenues to go. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, Opening you know, door, going you know? to juvenile every Monday, talking to mm-hmm. kids and trying yeah. to get them back on track or just, you know, just try to give them some positive words. And then uh, uh, through gang prevention, Wrecking Park came. So I was working gang prevention, Wrecking Park, and then doing a little other things on the side, <laughs> man. Like I couldn't let that life totally go, but. Still trying to bring you yeah, back. Yeah, but it, 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 you know, but I, I saw a lot, man, so. Coach Bell, I want to ask you, you know, you were kind of caught up in the system a little bit, find yourself in Juvie Hall, and then you see, okay, here, this is my reality if I choose this path, and then you find yourself in a program where you're like the assistant director of the Park of Rex and the gang mm-hmm. convention. Mm-hmm. What drew you to that? Like uh, where you, you kind of realize, okay, this is a, a path for me or at least an outlet, a possibility, so to speak. So I had a, um, so the rec center, uh, I used to go in a rec center a lot, man. And I had, uh, I fought a lot growing mm-hmm. up, man. And I just got out of uh, jail at this time. And uh, probably about uh, 20, 21. Okay. And uh, I went up in the rec center. I probably been home a day or two and uh saw uh, the director and she was like, you gotta do some other things and you should think about getting a job. And I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I need you to meet me somewhere tomorrow and this and that. And uh, we ended up going to Ella Hill Hutch uh, over in the Fillmore. And uh, they told me I was on the clock. So mm-hmm. I was kind of I'm like, oh, I'm getting paid. Right, right. Oh, right. Okay, well, let me at least check it out before I quit yeah. because, you know, let me check it out. Right. It ended up being cool. And it's nice. a lot but more behind it, but we had to do a whole nother podcast for that. Yeah. But, you know, but that's what drove me into gang prevention. And then uh, Midnight Basketball started mm. and they were looking for somebody to run it in Sunnydale because it was ran Sunnydale, Hunters Point, uh, Ocean View. And uh, Fillmore, and uh, all the people said, "You got to get Bill. You got to get Bill." So I ran the one in, in Sunnydale myself and Kim Mitchell, and uh, from that we finished Midnight Basketball, and I went to the the, the head man, uh, Joe Robinson. I said, "Oh man, it's over with. What we gonna do now?" Mm-hmm. And he just said, "Meet me at my office on Monday." Came in, he had some paperwork, I signed it, and I was the director at Sunday Hill Rec nice. Center, man. <laughs> That's how that came, you know, yeah. about. Uh, so Coach Tino, um, Coach Bill told us his path um, into coaching and then also working with Park and Rec, gang prevention. After your high school and collegiate playing career, what was your path? What led you into coaching and eventually becoming sports director at the Y? Um, yeah, good question. Um, I had no intentions of working with kids. I was a business major. Um, when I moved back to San Francisco, I was working at Charles Schwab. Uh, I had a son my freshman year of college. So by the time I graduated, he was three. And when I started working at Charles Schwab, I found myself in a pattern. I'm leaving at five in the morning and I'm coming home late and I'm missing time and I'm back home. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to do, have more flexible time of being around my son because I missed three years. And, um, you know, I started working from home a lot so I can control my time a little bit. And uh, I was just driving through Lakeview and I passed the library and one of my best friend's mom, you know, she's like a mom to me, Mm Miss Jackson, uh, went to the library to say hi. Mm -hmm. And she gives me this little flyer and said, hey, you went to college. You need to help some kids go to college. And she gave me this flyer and I was like, well, let me call. And I called and it was for uh, a lunch program. I met a woman named Gina Graves, better at Ocean View Park. And she interviewed me and she was like, you know what? It's really, really part time. It's a lunchtime program at Viz Valley Middle School. OK. And I was like, OK, I could do that. Eleven o'clock to one o'clock. I got the time. And yeah. at that time, I was working at the Giant with the Giants when the stadium opened. So my shifts were late afternoon into the evening. OK. So uh, I was working at Viz Valley doing like intramurals, mm. grab some okay. equipment out of my garage and just got it going. Making it work. Dodgeball. Yeah. Like, it's just, just the stuff I used to do yeah. in middle school. Yeah. And I felt, you know, and I was just having fun. And like yeah. when, when uh, you know, my last college at bat is a home run. And when I crossed home, it was like, it's over. 
Damn. Everything I worked for from when I was eight years old to 22. Up to this point. It's done. Like, what do and I, I do had an now? opportunity to play some independent ball in Indiana and chase the dream, but I already had a three-year-old. My right. clock was ticking. I Thinking couldn't afford to go. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, but it always bothered me. Like, mm-hmm. damn. You know, so like what working with the kids was like relief for me. And I started seeing like real talent. But they were just so caught up. And, you know, at Viz, you got the Tower Kids yes. and the Sunnydale mm-hmm. Kids. And that was like at the time, like before the neighborhood politics kicked in. They were still right. 10, 11, yeah. 12 years old. And as you start going 13, 14 in the high school, you start seeing that. Mm-hmm. And then that program ended that year. And my name got referred of me, you know, being able to relate to the kids. And I went to Luther Burbank Middle School. And I started doing an after school sports program okay. at Luther Burbank. Right. So I was doing that. So I was at Viz in 01. The spring of 01, got to Luther Burbank, the fall of 01, and Burbank closed in 2006. And at that time, I, you know, the city was real violent early 2000s. Yeah. You know, we were hitting almost 100 murders. We hit 100 murders one year, and I was seeing a lot of the kids that I was working like die. Oh, and it was man. depressing, you know what yeah, I mean? And, and I didn't want to work with kids no more. So mm. with Luther Burbank closing, I felt like that was my way out. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I, I love and give my hardest, even yeah. if I can. Mm-hmm. And for that was kind of with the school closing. That was kind of my exit out of working with kids. And I had a buddy who actually interviewed for the position at the Bayview YMCA. They were starting a new sports program and he gets out the interview and he calls me and he's like, hey, dude, I just interviewed for this position at the Bayview Y. Uh, man, they got a new gym, man, man, man. I told her all about you. It's perfect for you. And I was like, well, you interview for the job. Yeah. Don't you want it? He said, I want it, but it's perfect for you. Nice. I've already told the woman about you. Her name is Gina Graves. I told her uh, about you, Celestino. She said she knows you. And I was like, <laughs> Gina Graves? And I'm thinking five years prior, the only Gina I met, which her name was uh, Gina Graves. Now she got married and was Gina Farmer. Okay. So I was like, ah, but she was like, I know the name. Come on in. So it took me three, a couple weeks to accept the phone call just to visit because you know, I didn't want to go back into that neighborhood. I, you know, I had a lot of friends that, yeah. you, know, I you know, going into that area, a lot of friends that terrorized it and I didn't want to be affiliated with yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was just real messy. Just, you know, who knows? Yeah. And uh, it took me a while to call her and uh, I went and showed up and she toured me around the building and my, I wasn't thinking I was going to an interview. My daughter was with me, she's two years old. Brought some crowns, sat at the table and she mm-hmm. asked me if you could start a sports program, what would it look like? And I shared with her the same vision in 06 that I thought of in 97. She was like, okay, call me. She said, it's yours if you want it. You have a wow. vision. You were different than everybody that came because you came with a vision. Nice. And I was like, okay. And it took me a while, but then uh, I started that and uh, everything fell into play. I was able to get our kids in the uh, CYO program because our building was a Catholic school. So that kind of helped me build that pathway of sports and education. Mm-hmm. I was kind of taking that and helping kids that I worked with apply to Reardon's. Sacred Heart, just right, on my own. Right. I was just doing it because I knew yeah. it existed. Yeah, because I was that kid, and but it wasn't really intentional. And shout out to that homie that referred you to it. Absolutely, yeah. Ali Poo. Yeah. I mean, Ali Poo, you know, absolutely. To, to he really the out. for her and for he her saw to reach out to you. He saw it, you know. Yeah. And uh, for Gina to say, hey, you know, it's been five years since I've seen you. Right. Just come on down. Let me see what you've been up to. And then it just no that doubt. happened. And then God bless uh, her at God the same too. time, that's where I met Coach B. Met Coach Tino at the Y. Actually. Uh, me and the uh, executive director didn't see eye to eye on some things and it wasn't nothing too bad, but it was it was going to be she wanted me to be the sports director. She t- she just came in and she she took over and she was like, Bill, you're going to be a director now and you're going to write grants. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. I said, well, look. <laughs> When I got this job, I told them I don't do paperwork. <laughs> and as they hired me because I can just get kids into the building and we can do uh, in-house football, yeah. uh, like arena style. Yeah. We can do basketball. And I know the kids. We're yeah. going to be good. Don't worry about <laughs> it. And plus, I had a, a, a AAU team. I named it the Trojans because they took the Trojans away. Mm, yeah. You know, they they mm-hmm. stopped the program. So yeah. I said, I'm going to get a, a basketball AAU team. I'm going to call it the Trojans. Okay. You know what I mean? So so 
we didn't agree on that. And uh, after our meeting, you know, you know, she was like, Bill, you're going to be fine. You're going to do it. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And, I, you know, after the meeting, I went into uh, my little office and I wrote up my two weeks. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. Wow. I, I'll be out of here. <laughs> yes. I, but I ran a vending company. I had a barbershop. Yeah, the so, thing is going you on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so... I gave it to her, and uh, the next day she called me and like, are you serious? I was like, hell yeah, I'm serious. And, you know, and we we just clashed from yeah. then on, man. And uh, that's, but that's why I opened up for Coach Tino, yeah. man. It's a good okay. thing, too. But I used to see, like, after about, when I left, they had to call me back because the whole branch was going crazy mm. because the kids was going crazy. Oh, and man, she was like, I need there. to get you back in here for safety and support. And this and that. I said, is there paperwork involved? <laughs> she said, no. <laughs> I said, well, I'm back. <laughs> you know, Look, and I then I asked you this, Coach. My yeah, bad. Go so, ahead. Tino, where are you at at this point when all this is uh, going on? So I came uh, in September of 06. Uh, Gina got hired. Same woman that interviewed me at Ocean View Park. Got remarried, became the executive director in February 06. Mm. So I don't know when all that was happening, but I was- February 06. (laughs) So soon as she came into the Y, the same- He remembers. Not the same day, but maybe- Around that time, same time. Whenever she called that meeting, that's the day that I put my two weeks in. Tito came in the hell of paperwork. I I remember I was, you know, and, you know, she was uh, a special shot to Gina from her. Oh, yeah, we good. I was the first director she hired. And we would sit at this long table, that old long yeah, conference table. In the, in and I'd be on one side and this table was long <laughs> and it'd just be me and her. I said, how are we going to fill this up? You know, it was a boardroom. And uh, the whole way she said, I'm going to teach you how to become an executive director. So going into the Giants office, she would just bring me in. I'm like, what you want me to tell him? Tell him your story. Go to the Warriors room. What you want me to tell him? Tell him your story. So she just started putting me in she front of people. She groomed you to wow. become that executive yeah. director. She taught, she taught me how to win. win. She it. taught me how to win. I learned a lot from her. Yes, sir. And uh, that's why, you know, building this, like, I remember, like, I, my humble beginnings and started and how it took and what I was able to build it to. But, you know, Bill, taking that move, opened up a door for me. And uh, I remember I had a fundraiser. And, you know, I, I listened to that. I mean, like, Bill was one of the older guys I was seeing in the neighborhood, but he was like, man, like, so far out. Like, man, look at that dude. Like, man, you know what I mean? Right. And for, like, I get a chance to be, to really interact with him and get to know him, you know what I'm saying, on a personal level. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. And uh, him sharing things with me. And, you know, we had this bond, man. It was, I can't even speak why it was like that. And, Would you uh, say it was like an instant connection? You guys had like an instant chemistry uh, with each other? It wasn't instant. Okay. <laughs> it went through some rough yeah. edges. Yeah. It wasn't even a rough it was, yeah. process. Yeah. No. But it, it Maybe was, more of a trust thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trust I used to be like, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was more of a trust thing, but I yeah, remember. Little did you a, know this was a match made. Yeah, I had a fundraiser and he helped man. me. He used to come through and help me with okay. practices and he would call me and give me advice and always kept in touch, always mm-hmm. kept tabs with yeah. me. Okay. Always. Even when he moved out to Vegas and always kept tabs on me. And um, you know, it, it, it always worked. But uh, I remember we had a fundraiser and he helped me out and he just saw the kids and he stressed straight up, like, man, I couldn't have did it like this. Mm. Man, you really did it. And that made me feel good because well, I you said know, I'm proud of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told me that. definitely. Yeah. Get Definite. the man of flowers. Like, yeah, right. you got and to, you know man. that always gave me confidence. Right. And when we were starting this thing, like a lot of the times, this is my confidence. You know what I'm saying? And, and vice back versa. And forth. Exactly. Yeah. You and see that. You versa. sense it. Yeah. So uh, you know, I think that just all. I mean, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. That gave us our introduction. That's divine intervention. Divine right intervention, straight yeah. up. And it gave us to this. He moved off to Vegas. We still kept in touch, and we was trying to figure out how to. You know, we wanted to do a warehouse with hella basketball courts and rent it out and get money. We okay. wasn't thinking of an academy or nothing like that. But COVID was a blessing. And yeah. gift and a curse at the same right. time. You know, it allowed us to put our heads together and gave me some time to sit down and really reflect and put professional experience mixed in with my personal experience and come with a common ground. And then it's been on ever since. It just took off. It took off yeah. better than I even imagined. How beautiful is that? Crazy. Man. And this is actually like a true life skill lesson today. Go. Give him some, give him some, give him some, go. Oh, Ty got him. I'm here, horse. I'm here. Go. Focus on, focus on. Get through, get through. Go. Up 
uncle's arms. Uncle's arms, uncle's arms, because those feet don't drag them, don't drag You know, I'm growing up in the city and you really didn't have a lot of places where you can go play ball. And then you mentioned that you were at Crocker Park in 77 and yeah. then they had the football yeah. popping off out there. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a mission kid, so that wasn't my reality. You know, you're right. in a mission, you're going to the Mo, to Patrol Hill, 2 4, maybe 30th, and you kind of. But you're, you know, you're a little younger than me. Yeah, man. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I'm class maybe a lot. Too. Yeah, you're a yeah, lot yeah, younger yeah, than yeah. me. So in 77, I had an older cousin I looked up to, man. Mm. So I used to uh, follow him to practice uh, to Crocker Park, the same locker room that we have our program in. And I used to sit, by, I used to walk down the stairs and sit right by the chalkboard and listen to the coach cuss all the kids out. <laughs> And I uh, never thought I would still be in that damn room, but I'm coming out. You're the one coming out from the mouth. That's what I was talking about. That's full circle moment. That's, 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 that's crazy, circle, yeah. yeah. It's a few rules that we abide by here, man, and, and we don't fuck around about them. Uh, and I'm not, hey, I don't know how you get talked to at home, but this is how I talk. So get used to it. We don't fuck around out here on the, on the field. We all work hard, and we definitely don't fuck around in the weight room or inside that 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 building when we open them computers up. It ain't no capping. It ain't no bullshitting. It ain't nothing, man, because the day go by fast, man. Like, the day go by fast. And it's just, we just get down to business, man. Conduct yourself like young men, and we gonna treat you like young men. If not, your ass will be out of here fast, cause I don't give a shit. Uh, so my cousin played for the Spartans mm. out of that locker room, but then they also had the Trojans and the Gladiators. So I think the Gladiators was the middle, and then the Trojans was the uh, the top team. It's the like older the age teams. group, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Spartans, Gladiators, Trojans, and uh, then later on in the '90s, it was only the Trojans, okay. and it was a middle school team, and then they got rid of that. Man, and, uh, and what are you playing? The Seahawks and the Fillmore at this so point? So yeah, like it was that? all PAL. Okay. So it was the it, the Seahawks had the Condors. They had uh, another bird, mm. uh, <laughs> Portola Park. Somebody, the man, it was all kind of stuff going on. So Glen Park had mm -hmm. had some. I can't name the teams. I, I forget the teams Benjamin. right now. But uh, Glen Park had three teams. Okay. Uh, uh, Palaga which used to be Portland. Portland. Mm -hmm. And for those they who aren't had, familiar, this is a police athletic league, yeah. also known as PAL. Right, right. Portland had three teams. So it was teams all around the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Super Bowl was the Lacey Bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody that know the Lacey Bowl gonna go crazy. <laughs> they gonna go crazy because that was the big thing. And then a lot it, of huh? games were play, played, I know, at Galileo, if I could remember. But um, so moving forward, in uh, 97, uh, Kim Mitchell, uh, he owned a key shop on Leland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I owned a record store and a barber shop. And uh, we, we, you know, and then plus we knew each other from middle school mm -hmm. days. So, so you know, he like, man, we gonna, we gonna bring uh, another Pop Warner team to the city, man. And we got the paperwork. Man, won't you come in, check it out? So, you know, I'm in the key shop and there's a big old stack of papers like this. And as Coach T don't know, I hate paperwork, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I look, I probably read a few things, the bylaws or whatever. And I'm like, come on, man, let's do it. Yeah, do it. So it's Kim and and uh, Hutch and Shawnee and some other people, you know, well, we went to a few meetings. I probably, uh, uh, Got out of a few of them though, but <laughs> they finally got it going, and 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 I showed up, and I used to tell Kim like, you know, when the, when the kids got out there, I put my oldest son out there, and uh, he played. But uh, when Kim was coaching, I used to tell him like, "Hey man, I see this. Run this over there." But I'm in the stands. <laughs> Run this over there, and we still back in that locker room. They 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 got that locker room right. So Kim said, bring your ass out of the stands <laughs> and come help coach. Yeah. Go. Eight. Come on. Uh, we're here. Eight. Inside. Uh, get out. Get around. Come on. Get around. There you go. I have uh, four boys and two girls, man. And my youngest son, he went to St. Ignatius and... Uh, I also had a trucking opportunity in Vegas when he was a sophomore. 
So I moved my family to Vegas and he ended up going to Bishop Gorman. And uh, through Bishop Gorman, if, if nobody knows, man, they, they're a national football Just team, program, they're a powerhouse, huh? man. And he went there and he earned his way onto the field and uh, he got hurt. Anyway, one of the coaches, I said, man, hey, man, you need to come see my, uh, my academy. And a uh, couple weeks later, I went and visited his, his academy and uh, helped him bring some turf in, I'm, I'm, you know, in the class. And he said, all oh, my guys are football players. I want them to walk on turf all day mm -hmm. and this and that. And I'm, I'm like, oh, OK. So I went in. I'm helping them bring the turf in. We working all day together. And I said, hey, man, where are all your kids at? And he said, you've been working with them all day. The eighth graders, they was all my size. Wow. I, I'm like, hell wow. no. Already conditioned so, grown men. Yeah, so I started taking pictures of these guys, and I started sending them to Coach Tino. And, you know, I'm like, damn. And I'm like, so he started telling me, these eighth graders, he said, this guy has five offers. This guy has six offers. This guy has ten offers. And I was like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> But it was true. Yeah, damn. it was true. That's what they do out wow. there. Just and I started taking players. pictures of the facilities and the weight room. The weight room was like probably thirty thousand square feet. Oh, it man. had a, a forty yard dash 40 in it. Yard dash. Uh, wow. All kind of stuff, man. And uh, Straight combine. Just when the light yeah. turned on, you were like, yeah. I gotta bring this I, back no, home. No, I told huh? Coach Tino. I said, Hey, man, if they doing this, we gotta do it. We ain't got a chance in the oh. city, man. We don't have a chance. Our athletes don't have a chance, oh, man. Mm. If they doing all of this, and it it wasn't just one academy out there. It's like. Ten academies out there. It was there. just wow. the culture and, and the it's bar. Part of the culture, right? right? It's, it's the part standard. of the culture. Man, it's the and standard. we get such a, uh, you know, Northern California is not used to it. Here in Northern California, we are behind with what they're doing in other states. This is what they call an enhancement year. It's all about propelling the kid. And then, as far as athletically. They work out in the morning. They work out in the afternoon. Up, 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 so they're up, getting up, 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 up. a taste of what it's like to be a high-level athlete at a young age. You know, he's just sending me these pictures. I see these. I don't know what I was looking at. And he was like, these are eighth graders with college offers. I said, how? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, how, how does that even happen? He said, I don't know. But uh, if we're not doing this, our kids can't win. And I was like, yeah, but who? Want, why would somebody come to our school? Why would somebody go to Coach Bill? Coach, we're not educators. We don't even have that. He said, I don't know. We need to figure it out. Figure this out quick. We got to figure it out. And I was always playing around, like for maybe about 2010, 12, I was always playing around with the words urban student athlete. Because being an inner city kid and mm -hmm. seeing everything that we do, especially in San Francisco, like people shooting up dope, homelessness, <sighs> drive by. Like that's not normal, but we normalize the abnormal yeah, out yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But it was like having sports was like that gave us a focus that was a uh, it did something to me you yeah. know what i mean it gave me hope when hope wasn't there and i was always playing around with the words urban student athlete and he was like oh i like that mm. i was like yeah but i'm struggling with development or an academy he said i don't know when you figure it out go to city hall and get the name yeah mm. and i started taking some online classes at the time and he was like we do an online school and i was like that sucks it sucks getting on the computer and there's no teacher <laughs> i don't know man i don't know i don't right. know i don't know and um uh, I sent an a, a email to my professor, said, hey, I'm thinking about this name, Urban Student Athlete Development or Urban Student Athlete Academy. Second and and for a timeline, like what year is this? This is 2019, right. okay. like fall, fall 2019. And uh, she hit me back. She said, I think it should be Development Academy because nice. what you're putting out there, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Went and got the name and then COVID hits. Man. And then all sports stopped. You know, I'm a, I'm a sports stuff. director at the Y, you know, by my job. So I didn't have any sports to go to. There's no more traveling. You know, we're in the house. And I really got deep into the assignments. And uh, I had one assignment that was, you know, create a fund development plan for your organization. You know, I fundraise a lot. I got traveling sports teams. I always fundraise them. Mm -hmm. I could have easily just took something out of my files, turned it in mm -hmm. for a sake of the grade. But the second half of that question was, create one for your dream organization. And I flashed back to 97 and I was like, yeah. And then, you know, just with all my experience, every assignment I did, every research I saw, I started looking at 
different academies from around the country, what they was doing in Philadelphia, what they was doing in Vegas, what they were doing in LA, Sacramento. And I was just getting bits and pieces and uh, really researching, putting the academia behind right. it. Through all of this, man, uh, Coach Tino and myself, when we were coming up with Urban Student Athlete Development Academy, uh, you know, I, I ran into a guy uh, from Stellar Prep, man, that I talked to and I said, Coach Tino, you got to come talk to this guy. And uh, I think the next day we went out there to Hayward and, to Hayward. And he had a high school program that was similar. And it was like I said, it was COVID. Same concept idea. Same that concept, you got okay. but high school. Right. Got you. Okay. And they played the an independent schedule and they traveled and we're sitting in this. I mean, it was just it was an old photo studio. And I'm wow. thinking when I, you know, I heard about the school prior for Bill telling me about mm -hmm. it. So I'm thinking it's, you know, they got but school. But when you come to this, but I was like, this, you'll walk right past it. You wouldn't wow. even think it was yeah. there. <laughs> so we're sitting there talking to him and we're sharing the same story we're sharing with you. And kids are starting to come up the stairs. Coach, can I get the keys to the weight room? Like, yeah, that kid is, he's at Yale. This is this. And I'm seeing the kids come back. I'm like, damn. And he looked at us and he was like, so y'all got this. Y'all got this going. You want to do this? When you plan on starting? I'm like, man, we like two years away. He said, what you waiting for? For mm. what I hear, all you need is a spot and some keys. It's and you can get going good, right good, now. Right. And this is like April 20, right? April 2020. Mm. And I, was, I said, so spot and some keys? He said, yeah, all you need is a spot and some keys. And we're going across the Hayward Bridge and we're just driving. That's all I hear. Spot and some keys, man. Just you heard replaying, that? replaying, replaying in your head. You saw them dudes yell and all these offers. And Bill was like, I can get us a spot. And nice. that's what it took. You know, we got in the crocker and walked down the stairs, looked in and saw the mess and went, closed it back up and said, all right, let's come back in about a week or so so we can get our mind right to really clean it because you wasn't this, a walk huh? in there. Yeah. It was dormant for uh, eighteen about 18 months. Yeah. Wow. So the rats took over. Oh, the rats you can just imagine that. You know, they was yeah. running through there crazy. <laughs> wow. You got the keys. You got the facility. You're coming back in a week. You got to clean it. You know it's been a while because the place has been dormant. You're going through that. Like, what, like, where's your mind at in reference to, like, we're really making this happen and we're seeing it through, you I know? Said, at crazy. this point, you're thinking curriculum. <laughs> I said, we crazy. <laughs> crazy for even attempting No, no, this. I'm sorry. We were cleaning stuff out. It was a dude painting a house across the street. And we paid him a couple hundred dollars to just paint the whole place. I mean, we, we're, yeah, we're sanitizing the place. And uh, I remember almost killed ourselves. Almost killed ourselves power washing the place with a gas power washer. <laughs> smoked it out. Oh, I mean, man. man. But uh, <laughs> we were out in the field with the kids, and the guy went in there with the sprayer. And I swear to God, man, he came out looking like a snowman with the goggles <laughs> and everything. It's all done. And he was just all white. <laughs> we went in there the whole bit, and then it, he covered up all our stuff. But the. Uh, the process of putting everything through, people in the park just start paying attention. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? Right. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? You can't deny and that. And we were, I mean, we were so focused on getting it going that I don't think we saw the magnitude of what it was doing outside. We was how it was just growing, how it was coming, insane, you know? right? And yeah. then uh, things just fast forwarded, you know, and and you know, it was mm. like, I mean, we got a real school. We got a real school that these Catholic schools are waiting. We had a facility, we had a logo, and we had a plan in motion before we had one kid. The plan was already set. But you're already at that point where you- We already it. had it down on paper. It was yeah. already laid out mm -hmm. for us. And uh, we did, uh, you know, Bill was training kids in the park already throughout the, throughout the pandemic. And then we did a seven on seven football, mm -hmm. you know, just to get momentum, mm -hmm. to really attract kids to get right, into what right. we were really going to do. And next is when you're getting that accelerated And once we idea, finished right? that, you know, okay. we started telling our vision to the parents. And the parents were like, I want my kid to go to your school. Yeah, and nice. it forced us into starting the Accelerate Academy before we had a curriculum. Uh, tell them who really uh, forced us in. Yeah, yeah. We, so we had a kid that played with us and uh, he got accepted to a high school he wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. But, he, you know, he was a little undersized. Good kid, good football player, but he's going to get overlooked off his size. Mm -hmm. And his father came to our facility. We shared him our vision. And he said, you know what? I'd, I'd be a fool not to support two black men trying to get it done. Right. And they turned down Sacred Heart. Wow. Rejected the acceptance letter and told Sacred Heart they were going to USADA. And he called me and said, wow. man, the shit just got real. That's amazing. They sent me, they sent me, <laughs> they wow. sent me a screenshot. They sent me a picture of the computer. And they said, if you're not coming to us, 
where will you be going? It said Urban Student Athlete Development wow. Academy. My heart went boom. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have a curriculum. We didn't have our classroom set. We're still at Crocker clearing out stuff, painting, doing everything. But this kid forced us because literally, really, I thought we were two years away just for people to catch on. And I didn't want to deal with seventh and eighth graders that I didn't help raise since fourth grade. Got it's you. just too hard of a connection. That's yeah. just what I thought. But uh, we had a couple. He was the first one. And then three other guys from that team joined him. And what we were looking at, a we built a small little classroom, mm -hmm. big enough to host about six students because we're like COVID, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah. And it went to 14 kids as soon as we really got rolling. Wow. 14 kids. There, huh? And we were forced to start finding equipment that mm -hmm. moved around, have a put tables and chairs that folded up, make our own classroom. And we just went and, uh, you know, and we found a curriculum that was really, really good. And I didn't want to take anything from nobody educationally because even though I coach sports and all that, I consider myself an educator. Right. And, uh, you know, once we, you know, once we got rolling, I was kind of nervous about how the schools would respond to our curriculum. Because you're like homeschooling at this point. Because it's a homeschool yeah. model. It's a homeschool, it's a homeschool model. model right. You know what I mean? And uh, we got that call to St. Ignatius and they told us the first year that who they were going to take. And that's when we said this thing worked. This program definitely like prepared me a lot better than anywhere else would. Everybody else was like kind of struggling with it while I was like just going through the motion. To see what you guys are doing when you're taking these kids who are in middle school, knocking on door high school and going to USC. Look, my this is dedication. This is anti-hesitation. It's a real celebration. It's a dime block declaration. 59th and 5th Ave, Granny House with vanilla. Oh. Going to UCLA. I want the credit if I'm losing or I'm winning on my mama. That's the real shit. Let's talk about us. Just, I mean, that alone is prices for what it can do to a, a young athlete and where he's trying to see himself going and path he's going to take, right. right? I mean, I didn't get that. I could just imagine. None like, of us got that. Right? You know, and, I, and that's where what drives be. me because, you know, it used to kill me when when I got deep in my sports stuff and we're traveling mm -hmm. and, you know, we beat on teams and we can't. Hey, man, where y'all from? San Francisco. Y'all got talent in San Francisco? I had to take it so oh, personal. Like, yeah. what you mean? Like, we got athletes. Yeah. What you mean? Yeah. Right. right? But no, you know, our athletes are are that. We're underdeveloped. Yeah. We don't have, we're not doing what they're doing. I don't know if it's the environment, is the, the distractions, but we're not as focused. It's a little they're, bit of all of that. We all should you know, have the streets like pulling that. you back. Yeah. The whole it's everything, line, bro. Yeah. Everything. And uh, Growing up this was like, you know, this is the focus. This is very, 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 very intentional. And, um, you know, for a kid to have somebody sticking up for you and like, okay, I used to hear, you can go to college, you can do it. It was like, I could. And it was that, it was words. It wasn't like, Come on. Yeah. I'm about to, come on, come with me. And we're on those guys like that. And when we take these college tours, it's not like we're showing up and we're just on campus. We're on the inside with administration, recruiters. It's going to be a current football, Athlete. basketball player at the school. So we're getting the behind the scenes school. I mean, you're saying it's a kid that went through your program. That is here. It's a tangible. It's a or kid, kid we know. Like, Look, a kid you've I've coached. Got you. Like, we got at a relationship point, right? with this right. kid. Yeah. At some point. So these kids are like, this can be me if I choose this. Right, right. I put the That's work the in. That's the whole concept. Right. That's the concept. Well, I, I want to ask y'all, how did all this come about? Like just getting onto the campuses and getting the kids there on premier top tier D1 schools. Well, I, th I think it was all of it. Um, you know, like for me, having gone to Reardon, we would do different events at colleges. Gotcha. We'd have college guys come in, okay. and, you know what I mean? So I had a little bit of that. And then having gone to like Whittier College, I knew I could at least take some kids I work with to my school. Right. Yeah. And we actually did. You know, I got they got to see where I played football and baseball. They got to right. see my talk to my coach, who's now the athletic director. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was just going with the relationships of people that, you know, that we've known people at, you know, and being at Whittier, you know, my best friend played football at USC. So I was familiar with the campus. So it wasn't nothing for us to show up at campus. I knew how to move because that was like my second school. You know, my daughter goes to UCLA. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't nothing for her. Having up those her. connections and resources. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For you sure. know, and uh, uh, one of the executive directors that's uh, in the community that works really close with us, uh, you know, DJ Brookner, he went to Utah State. So he connected us with Utah State. You know, we took our kids to Utah State. Utah State actually visited our facility. Yeah. Nice. And they wow. couldn't believe what we were doing. And it was, it was a, 
it was people that worked, you know, it was the deans of, and uh, people that worked with the student athletes and we're telling them our concept and they, ah, oh, how does this work? Went in the classroom, she checked out the curriculum. And she was an English teacher. She, yeah, and worked specifically with the student athletes Ooh. at English Utah professor. State. That blew her mind, what these kids And she came out and was like, you guys need to come to Utah State. Oh, nice. And we flew to Utah State in May and they had a whole presentation. One day was all with the academic people because they're looking to diversify. I mean, mm -hmm. keep it real. These uh, prestigious schools need black and brown kids. Seriously. They need us, you know what I mean? I and it's, But it's like, okay, how many of us had the opportunity that dropped the ball? Yeah. Because we weren't real prepared talk. for it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, how do we give these schools the product they're looking for? They can scour all through these neighborhoods, but it's a dice roll. Yeah. Right. You know if it's a kid from USADA, He's prepared academically, he's, he's prepared physically, yeah. and the parents are prepared to take the next steps to help right. this going. So it takes the guesswork. It does. It takes the yeah. guesswork. We got our pulse in the community. And you send them up to succeed, too. I mean, yeah. it's just. It's a success formula. It's a beautiful you know, thing it's, you a guys got it's a going success on, formula. Man. But even with Utah State, you know, so we did that. Then the other day was, the next day was all the athletic tours. And it was just me and him that went. So they were like, bring your students. And we took all of them to a diversity inclusion event in nice. November. And we're talking about kids that are what, 12, 13? 13, 13, 14, 14. 14. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tight. Spending the night They're the on youngest campus. kids on campus. Youngest yeah. kids on campus. Yeah. yeah. Spending the night on campus. already leveling up though. I mean, what, yeah. were, what were the, the students' reactions just to have that opportunity? Well, like them, them being kids there. kids of color out there. Yeah, they were yeah. like, <laughs> What y'all like doing? Culture here? shock a little bit, huh? Yeah. In the whole Logan, Utah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so everywhere we went, Utah, everybody's like. looking, and it was that. <laughs> but it was it was an experience, man. And we got to go to a Utah State basketball game. Ooh, I've nice. never seen a college game like that, that in my right. life, man. It's intense. Yeah. And you know, we was on the big screen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nice. They played some other stuff. Like they're already recruiting these kids. Utah State. You know, those experiences are priceless. Those are experiences that play with your brain. Yeah, that's how yeah. I knew I wanted to go to college, man. I got a chance to go to UCLA. I got a chance to go to UC Santa Cruz. Yeah. I knew, like, I'm not trying to lose yeah. in the streets. I want to get out. Right. Like, my mom came to this country, put all that work in. The least I can do is graduate the least high I school can do. Right. and get my ass to college. And right. I did that, man. And Good. I commend y'all because you just mentioned that to have an English teacher come in here and be like, "This is the curriculum. This is what y'all yeah. doing. Like, yeah. this is for real, man." Yep. Can we talk about that price point on what it costs a kid in this program? I mean, to do what you guys are doing with the fundraising, the value, making these dreams happen. Yeah. The value of this program is thirty thousand per kid. Wow. That's the if value. we were in any other city, state, and we really wanted to go after money, that's that's what it costs mm -hmm. to do the training for the curriculum, for the food, for the traveling, the for the hotel, wow. for all the stuff that we do. It's valued at thirty thousand. That's what they're getting wow. in a lot of these different places. But being in San Francisco. You can't charge that. Who are you going to get? Yeah. Right? <laughs> or if you do get them, you're not getting the kids that need it. You're not right, getting right. the next that, that coach Bill the most. That's or it. the next coach Tino or most. one of us that should have had this. Right? Yeah, so yeah, our yeah. thing is about access. You know, it's about access to the resources and everything. And it's about giving our kids access to high quality stuff because, you know, it's a big difference between playing, you know, I, I mean, Little League and like Park and Rec are two different things. Yeah. You know what sure. I mean? So it's like, but you can't afford that most of the time. I couldn't go home and say, Mom, I need a trainer. Right. 150 an hour, six hours a week. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a roof. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, to go play some baseball. That's right. what I need. Put food on the table. Right. right. So right. that wasn't accessible. I couldn't even ask that. Wasn't yeah. But that was the difference between, you know, that was the difference. Mm -hmm. That was the difference in our development. So like coming with this up, it was like, let's give our kids every access and every resource that they can get to become their best version of themselves. And let's get them in the best schools possible because they need us. Absolutely. So let's leverage these relationships. Let's leverage the families we know. Let's do that and let's see what happens. And I mean, we got kids that are getting college offers leaving our facility in eighth grade. Uh, so Tino, you mentioned having these connections and resources that have um, allowed you to develop these relationships with colleges. Are there any campuses in San Francisco that have reached out to you guys and that are like helping, helping you? 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, University of San Francisco is a major supporter of us. Uh, I know I sit on the McCarthy Center board and the McCarthy Center, USF students have to do work in the community to graduate. And the McCarthy Center is a place where students go to to get placed at different organizations in the city. And I've been working with USF students for a long time. So um, we get USF students to help with academic support. Okay. You know, because, in, you know, what we do is hard. It's hard to do independent study and do it on your own. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need that. But what's been unique about our situation, we were end up getting current college athletes. Yeah. They're the story. That so connection. I might be helping you with algebra, but I play on the hoop team and I'm telling yeah. you this. So it's those real relationships. Mm -hmm. those with tangibles, that. Yeah. And, um, right. you know, so USF has been real critical to the Accelerate program. Um, we have a kinesiology professor that we work closely with, and they're helping us with our workouts, giving us terminology, explaining nice. what what is kinesiology. Yeah, right? exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's it, you know it's teaching the correct form of lifting, body movement. These guys are getting exposed to that. I didn't know what kinesiology was age. until yeah, I was in college. Yeah, yeah. For real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So USF has been a strong supporter. City College of San Francisco has been a major supporter of us. Uh, uh, Tino, my bad to cut you off, but I, I want to tie this in because being the program that you are with the football at the forefront, helping at-risk youth, but for it to be USF, which for those who don't know, have a rich tradition in football, which you could elaborate on, that connection for it to be now students from USF who no longer have a football program coming to work with your kids yeah, to yeah. put them in premier football programs. It's kind of like a trip to me. Absolutely, almost, uh, absolutely. Rotea Guilford, rest in peace. But he was one of my coaches in high school. Uh, he was on that USF team. Wow. And uh, he used to tell us stories when I was in high school that you know they were uh, they were going to play in the Orange Bowl for the national championship. Wow. But How they big had, is that? They had black players. And they did not want to let and them play. And they wouldn't let them play oh, because they had black man. players. And it killed the program. And, uh, Horrible. you know, so you, you, you look at that and you see the history of for San Francisco sports to have that much tradition mm -hmm. to where we're at today, where right. we're not producing is crazy to me. It's crazy. We're the For only real. major city that don't produce. I could, we, March Madness is right now. Right. <laughs> Who from San Francisco is playing? I mean, not the number it, of kids that should be, that's for right. sure. You know what I mean? So it's none. like, none, <laughs> none. So it's like, you know, for that tradition, there's a lot of talent. And, you know, Bill always tells me about the talent when he was coming up and all these guys that went pro and D1. And by the time I came around, it was getting less and less. And having been involved in youth sports over the last 20 years, it's even more or less. Man. You know, I have, I've been to one college signing day and it took 15 years to get to that point. Jerry Mixon went to Oregon. I got to go to Sacred Heart and watch him sign his letter. And he played with me when he was three years old. But it took 15 years wow. for me to see that. To get to yeah. that. Well, we had one before him that you Who's didn't it? see. That was Juju. Juju. Yeah. Juju. Juju. Absolutely. Juju did it. And he was Juju what? Neal. The first public school? Julian Neal. Julian went Neal. Went to Mission. Yeah. Yeah. First public school in over 25 years wow. to sign a major college scholarship. Wow. Yeah. Mission High School just won a state championship in basketball in 2018, and yeah, what, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> but we can talk about football, Lincoln and state cha and, and, Balboa Balboa and Galileo. winning yeah. Galileo winning state championships, winning state championships. Nobody's going Nobody's to college after work. <laughs> They're going to junior colleges, but no major colleges. Yeah. What do you think was lacking though? The preparatory part of it, the guidance. Um, Probably a little academic of of preparation. Man, let's just be real, man. The triple A sucks. That's <laughs> the least <laughs> that the they're in. And, and, and <laughs> it's too many high schools in San Francisco. Man, it, it, you know, we had the big eight, the Bow, Lincoln, Washington, McAteer, uh, oh, Wilson, Gal, Lowell, Low, and who else? So for those who don't understand what you were doing here at this program, this isn't like sports specific. This is on straight academic merits with a curriculum that is accepted globally. Yeah. yeah. Top Athletic, tier. First athleticism class. with an internationally accepted curriculum. Yeah. Man. Talk so about like if, impacting lives uh, yeah, on a like another if, level. If we had somewhere to where we can host students eventually from other countries, and they can get into one of these schools, like that's a pipeline. And that's one yeah. of my bigger uh, visions with this. You know, I would love to go back home to Panama or to the Puerto Rico and 
help a kid that's out here come get an American education. Tap into that through talent this out there. and experience what I experienced. Yes, Why sir. not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? So the it's uh, it's there. Right. It's yeah. there. And it's we got to talk about the brands that see your vision. I mean, look at who we have that are sponsoring you guys. Yeah. We yeah. No, we've been, you got yeah. Dick we've been Sports blessed. donating. Dick Sports has donated. Yeah. They've been a big supporter of uh, USADA. We got a Gatorade sponsorship. Uh, there's been a lot of community organizations like Young Community Developers that has sponsored our classroom. Um, tons of sm small businesses, Slim Body Fitness. Right. Uh, I mean, you got to yeah. talk about the hustling that you do too, yeah. like getting the plane tickets and just, I mean, all Well, that. we got all another sponsor too yeah. that deal with, with a lot of the, uh, like help us with our farm raisers, help us with our websites and all kind of other stuff is, uh, yeah, taco uh, trucks and... Uh, they just so it's it's uh, heavyweight trucking, man. Mm. You know, I work close with with Mike and Trish uh, all year, and I um, push myself up into their family. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Just that connection from when you had your, your trucking company. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did, we started off doing trucking together, mm. but I, um, you know, I, I'm like, man, when Tino and I started this, I'm like, man, I got I got to go where my passion is, right. and um, you know, and that's a lot of money in trucking, man. It's a man. lot of money in trucking. And, you know, I know Mike and Trish are like, man, you crazy. But Mike was like, hey, man, I got to make a way for you. And and they saw our vision and they like, you know, they came to a fundraiser and they do they, they gave us a check one year. And then uh, mm. the next year they gave us a check and then. Like I push myself into their family, like they real family. I'm at the house. I'm at them, you know, I'm family. I'm in the family photo. You know what I'm saying? They did the same thing to hey. got the Christmas sweater on. Right. Hey, they did the same thing to USADA. They just start popping up. Hey, we're gonna do this. Hey, we're gonna do that. Hey, Bill, we're gonna do this and that, that. And now they are part of the USADA family. They're a little more closer, even you know, I know uh, YCD. They do a lot for us, man. They 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 buy our computers. They donate the computers to us every year. And DJ is a real big supporter, man. He really right. see the vision because he's a uh, he was a, a athlete himself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but Mike and Trish, they just like you know, they just think it's so dope, man. I think they more big on it than we yeah. are, man. But yeah, they, they really They see big. the vision yeah. that you guys yeah. have. They, they, you know, small trucking company, man. Yeah. Heavyweight that just, you know, just came up yeah. and I saw the struggle, their struggles. They see our struggles. I think that's why we intertwine so good. How are you guys able to get the sponsorships from big corporations like Gatorade and Dick Sporting Goods? It was, uh, you know, of course, it was, you know, existing the relationships that we had with people. You know, there was a gentleman that used to volunteer for me. OK. And uh, he just ended up becoming working at Dick's and somebody told him what we were doing. And he called nice. me five years later and we just reconnected. Nice. And he just felt what we were doing. And, uh, you know, we, we just been able to meet a lot of different people, you know. And uh, I feel like your guys like entire story, like we said earlier, is yeah. just divine intervention. No, yeah. absolutely. I mean, yeah. we the universe uh, at work for real. Yeah, we went yeah. to the bank account with a hundred dollars, opened up a bank account and we ain't needed for nothing since. And wow. we're talking about Man, airplane tickets. We get no Funding, no funding from the city. <laughs> oh. None. Time to step up, Frisco. So, yeah. hey, we grinding out here. Yeah. Um, just to clarify and let the viewers know, um, USADA, and then I see on the hoodie back here you have Accelerate. Can you just explain the difference of what those two are? Are they the same? Yeah, so uh, USADA is the organization with an umbrella. Community events you know, hands on the street. Accelerate is very specific. Okay. You know, Accelerate is the academy. Okay. That's a, that's a specialized program strictly for serious student athletes that want to take this path gotcha. going into college. So it's, uh, that's our, that's our academy. That's our cornerstone product. Okay. So everything we do within USADA from our quarterback wide receiver DB camps to our summer performance training camps, it's really of reaching out to the community and to let them know about 
what the end product is, what Accelerate gotcha. is. Right? So Accelerate is the school itself exactly. that they're going to commit to. You. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it's called Accelerate for a reason, like get you ahead. Yes. Because uh, everything sure. that we do is to propel you forward. Mm. There's no 13 and 14 year old for 10 months intentionally working out for eight hours a week. You're not doing that. But There's also that. get them ready for the academic portion of that. Yeah, like, right. and you know, as far as academics right. goes, right. Right. you know, like I said, I mean, you mentioned uh, eighth graders having college, uh, you know, college, college offers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. College offers, you know, Man, that's how happening. accelerated is that? Right, <laughs> and that was his vision. I yeah. thought it was crazy. I didn't yeah. think it existed <laughs> until we were able to do it. And uh, you know, nothing that we do is uh, it's always about moving forward. You know, it's about getting our kids ahead academically, getting them ahead athletically so when they get to high school they're standing out they're yes, ready to go sure. they're standing out for those that want to donate to your program where would they go uh, is there like a, a site or, or link that you could send folks to that, that believe in your program that want to kind of you know yep it's uh usadasf.org usadasf.org London Breeze supervisors it's time you go and hit that site up real quick right absolutely <laughs> absolutely um we're uh, here at this point. I want to talk about that third annual signing you guys just went through right now, where you, you're getting kids to go to premier high schools, man. Yeah, like, that was a that SI, was that was a art, vision I mean. that we put. You know, even when we first said it, we were sitting in the dun we called the dungeon. Where we had, you know, when the kids are in class, we're in our office, and uh, we were like, signing day. Nobody's doing high school right. signing day. All my life. Trying to keep me down All this time Never thought I'd make it out This document represents that I, Andrew Pond, will be taking my tap Taking my talents to Archbishop Reardon. I, Genesis Waka Waka, will be taking my talents to Archbishop Reardon High School. I, Santino Tiarino, will be taking my talents to St. Ignatius College Preparatory. I, Aiden Manu, will be taking talents to Archbishop Reardon High School. I agree to take the lessons, the work, the ethic, and the heart I learned at USADA to the institution named above. I fully understand and accept the responsibility of continuing to work equally as hard in the classroom, the playgrounds, or and on my overall personal development to become the best student athlete I can be. By signing this, I abide to lead by example and represent myself, my family, and my community in USADA with the utmost respect. I promise to continue being a good example to the future students of USADA that are behind me so they can experience the same opportunities. That so we could, you know, so our kids can celebrate their accomplishments. That hard work. And be they proud put of in. it. Now yeah. people might not agree with that. They mean like, oh, it's just high school, it's just that. But they don't realize what these kids are doing for 10 months in and the what dungeon. they're going through. And they grinded for it. Yeah. And they work for it. Because it doesn't yeah. matter how much technology is out there, you can't download athleticism and sport. You gotta put in the work. You gotta earn that hard work. You gotta yeah. earn it. And right. that's why our whole it's about progress. It is. Progress you know, is the process. Progress is the process. And you can see those kids' faces when they were signing, man. Oh, that, yeah. That, that joy and that, yeah. that fulfillment Mike, of like, Hey, we had a I, kid I a year ago was in tears. Got in nowhere. Man. Got in nowhere. Family destroyed. Man. One year later, tears of joy. Talking to his parents at signing day. They said, dang, nowhere we had. Last year, we had nowhere to go. Man. This year, God. we came back and he broke down crying. <sighs> And he was like, Mom, it was hard. Mm, it's hard you, coming here it, every though. day. You did it. But he did it. And that kid catch the bar, the bus, and on time, one of our top guys. He yeah. wanted it. Did yeah. what it yeah. takes. Did what it yeah. takes. And trusted that we could get him there. Right? Yeah. And got what he worked for. And, and that's one thing, too. I tell, we tell all the parents in the beginning, you got to, like, 
Coach Tina always say, we don't have no secret sauce, but we do have a formula. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you got to follow the formula. Yeah. You got to put all the ingredients in, mm -hmm. parent participation, uh, getting your kid there on time, making sure your kid mm -hmm. doing his assignments. Mm -hmm. Like, we only with him for five hours a day. Right. The rest happens at home. Mm -hmm. And God bless the parents that go through this because, you know, one coach told me, Coach Walsh from Sarah High School, saw him at a basketball game. He said, you guys are doing a very good thing. And I said, thanks, Coach. He That's said, nah, man. you're doing a good thing, man. Like, nobody understands it, but it's a really good thing mm -hmm. and it's needed. That's what he told me, man. Because he understands. That's why they whooping everybody's asses around, you know, Northern California, you know. But L.A. says we're 20 years behind them. 20 and years. he can't get past the L.A. guys. But Modern day, Bosco. He's making his way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And all for all the haters, man, that say they don't like the program and what we're doing is a holdback. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not a holdback. It's an accelerated program. And all of our students that's in high school right now, they're doing really good, man. You know, really good. And we check up on them. We do case management. We do uh, uh, life skills. It's more than just a, a basketball or a football team where you coach in for two hours and then you send them home. How can you hate on something like this? Real. Isn't this, if, if I'm correct, isn't this the first and only program of its kind in San Francisco? And that's why. Yes. And that's why. It's too new. It's too, it's, it, 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 it's, you know, it's not, it's not the standard up here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that was my biggest thing and that was my biggest fear the first year. It was still a science project. But, um, it's not a science project no more. No These right. schools are happy with our kids. Yeah. yeah. We could show up at any of them campuses at any given day. Prove it now. Now. And the admissions. Uh, mm. Coaches are one thing. Yeah. But when you got the admissions mm. teams high-fiving you, that's more yeah. important to me because that's that, that says coach everything. can't promise you. you can't get yeah, that's it. They got to go through the admissions teams. And right. it's good that we got a lot of, you know, our, our kids keep the doors open. And that's why we coach our, we don't even talk sports to our kids. They talk about what they did over the weekend. We're on them tougher. You didn't do no homework though. Yeah. Or you mm. didn't get this done. I don't want to hear about your sports. Right. You know what I mean? And But like, we're on them so tough. We coach them hard on that. And when they get to high school, it's a little bit, I'm not going to say it's easier, but they're already, they're prepared they're for programmed. Right. Mm -hmm. They're ready. Their swag levels on one thousand yeah. leveled up. Absolutely, Yo, man. I got I got a toast to this program. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank y'all. Hey, progress. 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 Yes, progress. 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 Man, well, once again, we just want to thank Coach Bill, Coach Tino, the co-founders of the Urban Student Athlete Development Academy. Thank you guys so much. What you're doing is beautiful. It's amazing, and. Cheers to you guys. Progress again, Absolutely. once again. Progress, baby. Progress. 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 Progress, huh? Progress. Progress. Uh, Progress. Progress. Go, side, donate to Accelerate. It's for real. These kids is going somewhere, and we got to thank these gentlemen for doing what they're doing. Hey, man. We don't slow yeah. down up here. It's all gas, no brakes. Yeah, you got four, five feet. I'm not going to walk you down. Three, brother, so three. Oh,